Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be an update video. My bin is beyond full. I have a lot of products that I have tried multiple times. Most of these are full makeup releases and I can't wait to tell you my updated thoughts on them, whether the first impression I gave you of these products is still a valid one or if I've changed my mind about some things along the way. As I usually do, I'll try to remember to let you know whether the product was purchased by me, sent to me, and whether or not I am adding it to my collection, giving it away, etc. We have a lot to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. I will have all of these products listed and linked down below in the description box. I'll also go ahead and put timestamps in the description box next to the products in case you want to check out the list and just see my updated opinion on like something specific and you don't want to watch this whole video. Whatever the case might be, definitely check out the description box for the links if you're interested in purchasing anything. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to grab products from my bin at random, but I did want to start with the Hourglass Face Palettes because I have a discount code for you. You can get them for a 20% off discount. These retail for $90 each, so 20% is not bad. I don't think it'll get much better than a 20% off because these sell out every year, so definitely take advantage now if you want to go for any of these. My suggestion, if your complexion is sort of kind of like mine, is to go for the jellyfish palette and obviously you can also customize it to have it in the owl packaging or any other of the packagings that, that you might like. This one I absolutely love and I'll tell you why in a second before I forget. The code is this one right here on the screen. Like I said, if you're going to go for it, please use the link I'm leaving you down below. It'll be the first one down there. So when you use the code unlocked VIP20, you can save 20% off of Hourglass. And I don't think it just applies to this palette. I think it's anything you want to purchase on the Hourglass website. So definitely take advantage now before the coupon expires. And I don't know when it expires, but I'm assuming it will at some point. Anyways, I was saying that my biggest suggestion is definitely the Jellyfish palette. If you are around my complexion, or lighter. If you have medium complexion, then go for the leopard one, and then for darker complexions, the snake one is obviously the best. With the color of my skin, I could have gone for either the jellyfish one or the leopard. I think both of them work on my complexion. However, let me tell you why I prefer the jellyfish one, and it is the finish of the powders. The jellyfish palette has more natural looking powders rather than the shiny finish that Hourglass sometimes has. I don't love the ones that have the added sparkle. I don't love the ones that are too luminous because I have um, pores and I have texture on my skin and I find that those can be a little bit less flattering than something with a natural finish. And so I absolutely love that the Jellyfish palette has a bronzer that has a natural finish rather than radiant. And also the blushes have a natural finish rather than radiant. The finishing powders, natural finish rather than radiant. The only radiant finish thing in this powder is the highlighter, which is an obvious thing. But other than that, everything has more of a natural finish. And so I find myself reaching for this one much more than I have reached for any other hourglass palette I have ever had because the one reason I didn't reach for them as much as I wanted to was that the finishes of the products were a little bit glowier than I usually like especially when it came to the bronzers also the bronzers were usually a bit too warm toned for me and this one has a perfect neutral toned bronzer so I love it I highly recommend it again if you have more of a medium to tan complexion go for leopard if you have a darker complexion definitely get the snake one and the snake one has the same properties I just spoke about with the jellyfish one it's mostly a palette with natural finishes rather than radiant with the exception of this blush right here and so I feel like you guys will love it as I said the perfect time to purchase them is now with a 20% off discount before they sell out and the best thing is that it's on the hour glass website so you can customize your cases if you want. I'm half tempted to get the leopard palette in the owl packaging because the owl packaging was my favorite since I saw it but do I need it? No I don't need it. I already have these two which I bought full price. <laughs> I'm still tempted though. I absolutely love these and I love to collect them so we'll see. <laughs> 
let's keep chatting Hourglass and I have an update to give you on the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. This is a skin tint that I'm wearing today. As you can see, my face looks very nice and natural. I did set it down with some translucent powder. This one has a very radiant finish to it. And while I like the look of my makeup today, because I do, <laughs> this is not my favorite skin tint I've ever tried. It has a sheer coverage. Um, so some of my redness can still show through it ever so slightly. It's fine. I can build it up. I can put something underneath. That is not the biggest concern, but I wanted to make you aware of it. My biggest thing with this one is that it's not a thin product that sinks right into the skin. Even though it's a very hydrating skin tint, it's a thicker gel sort of consistency that I feel kind of sits on my skin more so than blend right in. Not sit in an unnatural, I'm going to give you texture type of way. Like I said, I like the finish of it on my skin. What I don't like is the feel of it. Um, like I said, I set it with some translucent powder, so right now it feels totally fine, but like on the areas where I don't set with translucent powder, like right here, see how it's like nice and glowy there? Well, those areas also feel slightly sticky because I haven't set it with the translucent powder there, which helps me keep the shine but I don't love that wet feeling on my face that permanently stays there. So those are my cons with this one. Other than those two things, the sticky feel that doesn't go away and the fact that I wish it had just a tad bit more coverage, it's great. Um, however, I just have other skin tints that I like better because they sink right in and they don't stay sticky. <laughs> um, so not my favorite. I know it's highly rated. I know a lot of people loved it. But I just don't love when the makeup stays sticky on your face. If you set your entire face with powder, then that would go away. But that's just not something that I usually would do. Um, anyways, I am keeping everything I've talked about so far and all of these I have purchased myself. And let's keep going. I do have some eyeshadows in my bin right here, but they're not big eyeshadow palettes. I took all of the new big eyeshadow palettes that I have tried and I'm going to put those in a separate rankings video. And so the eyeshadow palettes that I'm going to talk about in today's video are the eyeshadow quads because I didn't want to rank those with the big palettes. I didn't feel like that was fair. So let me start with Kaleidos. Kaleidos launched both of these cool toned looking quads right here. And the formulas are wonderful. The color stories, they're okay. Um, I definitely prefer this one over the purple one. It has this like natural smoky feel to it. I love the metallic finish of this quad as well. All in all, I don't have any complaints about like the formula or the performance. It's just that the quads color stories are not something that I am gravitating a lot towards as of late. And also, they look very similar to things Kaleido has launched in the past. I feel like they used to be such a colorful fun, innovative brand. And ever since I started coming out with the quads, I just haven't been as much of a fan of the products they've been launching. So it's cute. If you go for one, I would definitely pick this one. I think it's the most unique out of the two, but I don't think that these are must-haves. When they launched those quads, they also launched these cheek products right here. It's like two bronzers and two blush type products, but they're all called blush. Even the bronzy ones are called blush. And these are made for super pale people, which is a bit of a contrast to, to things they've launched in the past, because in the past they've done super colorful blushes, and this time they did super toned down, taupey, barely there type blush colors that honestly don't show up on a lot of different complexions. I have a pretty light complexion and they barely show up on me. Um, I have not reached for these ever since I tried them for the first time and I don't see myself reaching for them that much in the future because it's a lot of building up for not a lot of color payoff, you know? So my opinions on these unfortunately have not changed. Everything Kaleidos was sent to me by the brand and I am keeping it for now, uh, but at some point I have to go through my makeup collection and see what I actually want to keep from the brand and what I want to get rid of. 
I've been trying this matter of fact moisturizer. This is new at Sephora. It is a 5% pro vitamin B5 moisturizer with liquid crystal lipids and Centellia Asiatica. Anyways, this is a gel like texture moisturizer. I'm wearing it today underneath my makeup and I've been wearing it on and off. Some days I pick my magic cream, some days I pick this one for the past few weeks and I actually really like this moisturizer. I find that even though it's a gel texture, it doesn't sink into my skin, it disappears, my skin feels hydrated, it has a nice lip to it, it makes my skin look radiant. I feel like the hydration with this one actually lasts all day and it has sort of a cooling, calming effect on my skin as well, which I absolutely love. The packaging is great. This one I believe retails for like 60 some dollars, so it's a more affordable um, option to magic cream. I'm not saying I like it more than magic cream because you guys know I'm a little obsessed with magic cream. But if you're looking for something cheaper, I would recommend that you try this one because I have been impressed with the performance of this moisturizer. This was sent to me by the brand and I am keeping it and I'm going to continue to use it because um, so far I love it. The packaging, super sturdy as well. It feels very heavy and luxurious. Oh, and it has one of these pump up things, um, so you don't have to dig your finger in the jar. Let's talk about Bobbi next. I tried another skin tint recently, and it was this one from Bobbi, the Vitamin Enriched um, Skin Tint. I purchased this one myself when it came out at Sephora. It was suggested to me by my friend Andrea, and I can't trust her, okay? <laughs> I have not found any way in which I like to use this skin tint. I reviewed it for you in a video or included it in some other video. I don't know, I talked to you the first time I tried it in a video, I do remember that. And then I have tried to use it different ways afterwards and it's never worked for me. On its own, it lacks coverage. It also has a little bit of a sticky feel to it. My redness shows through. It doesn't last that long on my skin. I also tried it on top of my Dennis and Myra skin balm because that has some coverage and I didn't love it with that one. I tried it with the Fenty Blurring Stick and I put the Fenty blur Blurring Stick as a base um, to cover the redness and then this one on top and when I applied this one on top it took away the coverage that the Fenty thing had given me. I just don't recommend this one. It's kind of tricky to work with. The coverage isn't great and it's not an affordable product either so I don't see any positives <laughs> when it comes to this one. Since I talked about the Fenty stick, let's go ahead and talk about it. This is one of the best products I have tried as of late. This is a hydrating cream stick that has a beautiful medium buildable coverage. It sinks right into the skin. It blurs your pores. It has a fantastic natural to glowy finish. I cannot praise this one enough. I absolutely love this. They outdid themselves with this one and nothing complexion from Fenty had ever worked for me as well as this does. The Fenty foundation I could make work but ultimately it wasn't for dry skin. The Fenty skin tint never worked for me. Their contouring products to me are a bit too dry. This is the only Fenty product complexion wise that I have ever loved. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I did purchase this one myself. Of course, I am keeping it. And I have mine in the shade 8. It is just fantastic. I love to use it on its own and I like to layer it with other products. Like today, I did my Hourglass Veil Skin Tint all over. And as I mentioned, it doesn't have the coverage that I would prefer. So I layered the Fenty Stick right on my cheeks on top and just like tapped it in with my fingers a bit. And it gave me the coverage that I wanted. So with anything I've paired it, honestly, it works wonders. It's a must have. <laughs> it's kind of rare for me to be impressed by a lip product, but I gotta say Sigma Beauty knocked it out of the park with their new lip creams. This is their full release. As you can see, all products beautiful for the full season. My favorite shade is called Dapper and it is the most stunning cool toned I don't want to put it on today because it's a cool tone color and I'm like kind of peachy but here's a picture of me wearing dapper it is a perfect color for the full season I love it um, I also really loved the shade dusty rose and the shade rosewood I have a little short I uploaded to my page where I swatched them all for you and so 
these were excellent it is a full pigment type of product it is not sticky you don't need a lip liner for it um, and they last for quite a while on the lips it feels hydrating just fantastic the only kind of thing that bothers me a bit when I'm wearing it is that it's definitely a product that you feel on um, you feel like you're you know wearing a lipstick that you have to be careful with uh, but other than that I love them. <laughs> these were sent to me from Sigma. I do have a discount code with them if you want to get these with a discount. And of course, I'm keeping all of them. Let's not stop talking about Sigma. They also launched these eyeshadow quads here that are excellent. I did a video reviewing these. Definitely check it out if you're interested in looking at all of the swatches. And I'm actually wearing one of them today. I'm wearing one of my favorite ones, which is this one here in the shade peach pie i love that shimmer as you can see it has a beautiful nice metallic finish these quads are perfect they are laid out in perfect ways every time they each have a transition color a color to darken up the outer corner a color for the inner corner and a color for the center of your eyelid some of my favorite color stories are peach pie of course which is what i'm wearing on my eyes today take a look right there i also love this green one this green one looks great this one is called caramel apple and tiramisu is the one that i ended up trying in my review video and another one that i absolutely love anyways all of them are excellent you cannot go wrong with any of these squads i highly highly recommend them as well these were sent to me from sigma and i am of course keeping them all Let's talk about Huda Beauty quads next since we're in the subject of quads and these were kind of a fail and it's a shame because the price is right and the formula of the matte shades which three out of four of the shades in each palette is a matte shade the matte shade formulas are actually pretty good but the color stories are not it and the shimmer shades are also not it like this quad right here look at the three matte shades isn't that beautiful but then you put that shimmer in there and it makes everything darker you can't have an inner corner highlighter you can't have anything nice and sparkly and fun in the center of the eyes just this ugly dull looking shimmer shade no and they did the same pretty much with all of them the one that is a little better is the peach one it has the three mattes and then this gold shimmer actually has a bit of a sparkle to it but just not as fun as like the sigma ones i just showed you and honestly i don't think that these are worth it they could have done so much better than these colors for this release it was disappointing i did purchase these myself and i'm keeping them because i bought them but like I might declutter them soon <laughs> let's talk blushes next ColourPop just launched these three blushes with their 1111 collection they sent me the collection and so that's why I have them already and the blushes I actually really loved I'm wearing one of them today I'm wearing the shade claim it which is this one right here it's kind of like a very toned down light bricky type shade um, and i love the way it looks on my cheeks it is perfect for the full time and so are the other shades the lightest of the three colors i actually also really loved let me just go ahead and add it to the apples of my cheeks i just love these toned down natural looking blushes and so i have no complaints about these from ColourPop. also i believe they're either 10 or 12 dollars each which is a steal and they last on the cheeks for quite a while today i am wearing them for i think the second or third time this is my second time wearing them but i wore them all day yesterday and they lasted great anyways i'm keeping two the lightest two and giving away the darkest one to a tanner friend <laughs> um, but I love them I have the Odin's Eye and Angelica Nick Fist lip collection here I really loved the glossy colors that she came up with but I'm not a huge fan of that matte um, lipstick formula that moussey matte lipstick formula plus the moussey lipsticks that she came out with were quite warm for me and so i'm not going to be keeping everything i'm going to be keeping two and giving away three of these products um let's see both of the matte formulas i'm giving away because i just wasn't a huge fan of them 
I'm also going to be giving away the Shine in the Shade Quicksand because it's quite warm for me, this color right here. And so I'm going to be keeping the Glow in Radioactive, which is kind of clear and sparkly. So you take a look right there. And I'm going to be keeping the Shine in the Shade Spectral, which is this color here, and I do really like this one. I think Angelica has quite a beautiful warm complexion and those colors look absolutely stunning on her but I am neutral to cool tone and on me they're just not that flattering <laughs> so I'm happy with the two that I'm keeping they're the more cool tone slash neutral ones and then I'm giving away the warmer shades so next let's talk about this new release from Laura Mercier I actually looked for these to purchase them myself when they first came out but they were not available when I looked for them and then they sent them my way and I have all three of the shades they're all illuminators there is a gold glow champagne pink and peach bronze and these are good but they didn't blow my socks off I much prefer the Charlotte Tilbury ones because the Charlotte Tilbury ones have a bit more pigmentation to them like these you put on and it's the same as putting on a glowy moisturizer kind of like the glow is that natural looking that it doesn't really look like you have a highlighter on the face should I demonstrate I guess let me prove it to you right now I've tried to use them a couple of times and like once you blend them out see that's what it looks like right there which is like barely any glow like my nose it's just not powder and it looks shinier than my cheek so um, I don't recommend these unfortunately I much prefer the highlighters from Charlotte Tilbury so if you're looking for a liquid highlighter like this definitely go for the Charlotte Tilbury ones instead my favorite one being the um, pillow talk highlighter that one is amazing with that said I don't know if I should keep them or not for reference I'm tempted to just give them away but I can't part with them just yet they're too new so I'm going to keep them for reference I'll play some more with them see if there's any way that I can incorporate them into my makeup like I said just very natural looking for my liking but they're not terrible right so I'm not going to give them away is my point I'm keeping them for now <laughs> let's talk about these right here next these are from Kaleidos and they are balmy glossy type products from the collection they sent over my way I already showed you the blushes and the eyeshadows which I wasn't super obsessed with the best part of that collection hands down these balmy glosses right here these are so freaking beautiful even the ones with the glittery shades are fantastic I'm going to wear one to show you take a look right there and they have the greatest formula not sticky they feel like you're wearing a lip balm they are very very natural looking the packaging of these is absolutely stunning and except for the red one i'm giving away the red one because i did not like this one it's like dorothy's shoes on your mouth and not a big fan um so i'm giving away the red one but all of the rest of the colors i am keeping and i'm treasuring and adoring and you'll see me use these because i love the formula that they came out with for these lipsticks like I said, the packaging is fantastic. The shine is incredible. They look amazing on. Definitely check out the review video where I tried the Kaleidos collection if you want to see me try all of these on my lips. But 10 out of 10, okay? They outdid themselves with these. This is my new favorite lip product from Kaleidos because the rest of them are those moussey matte lipsticks which like I said I'm not a huge fan of that type of formula these are excellent let's keep going with lip products since I already fell down this rabbit hole um, these right here from Boxum these are the um, fall collection for Boxum glasses they did three different types of formulas with three different colors the red is a matte liquid lipstick then we have a creamy gloss and a glowy gloss and honestly all of them were nice enough these claim to be plumping um the buxom lip gloss formula is borderline sticky for me like it just 
a little bit sticky for me. These were sent to me by the brand, by the way. This red lipstick looked beautiful. Will I get a lot of use out of it? Probably not, so I'm going to be honest with myself and just put it in the giveaway pile because I just don't think I'm going to reach for it that often. And I think I'll keep one of these. I think I'm going to keep the pumpkin pie one because this is the one with that cream formula that I like. Plus, it looks very beautiful. And I'm also going to be giving away Daisy Donut, which is the one that has the more shimmer finish and also the one that is a little bit stickier. So I'm going to be giving away two. I'm going to be keeping the pumpkin pie one. Um, overall, I like them okay. Like I said, buxom, a little bit sticky for me. I just don't like the feel of sticky glosses and that's a bit of a turn off for me. <laughs> Along with the Bobbi Brown skin tint that I despise that I told you about earlier, which by the way, I don't think I said if I was keeping it or giving it away. And I did put it in my keeping it pile, but I am going to be giving this away because I know that I'm not going to use it. <laughs> Anyways, along with that skin tint, they came out with this powder right here. It's the Vitamin Enriched Press Powder in Yellow. I tried this one a couple of times and every time it gives my under eyes a bit of this not very flattering on my skin tone yellow hue to it. And so I don't like it. Maybe as a finishing powder. Let me put it on my nose definitely does take the shine away. I guess I'm trying it for the third time to see if maybe as a, strictly a finishing powder I like it better. It did immediately take that shine away from my nose, but I don't know that it did much besides just take the shine away. I guess I could use it for that, so I'm going to keep it for now. If I change my mind about it in the future and all of a sudden I love it, which I highly doubt, I'll let you know. But um, for now, it's just not something that I'm super excited about. I don't recommend it that much. I have three new mascaras that I tried recently that I can update you on. The worst one is definitely this one here from Huda Beauty. And it's not even about how it made my lashes look. I don't even remember how it made my lashes look. I feel like it was an okay look. Nothing that blew my mind, but also they looked nice. Um, the thing with this one is that it smudges more than any mascara I've tried in the past few years. I have not had a mascara that smudges this badly in a long time. And so I don't recommend it. If your lashes touch your under eyes or up here, you are going to see this mascara <laughs> reflected all around your eye area very soon after you put it on. So definitely, definitely a no for me. I don't even know if I want to give this one away because I feel like I would be giving away something that just is going to make someone look terrible. So I think I might just actually take it back to Sephora because I did purchase this one myself and I don't like it that much that I don't even want to give it away. I think I'm going to take this one back because it's just a bad product. <laughs> the other two were sent to me. I have the Fan Fest from Benefit. It's okay, nothing overly impressive. It didn't do much as far as volume and length for me. I'm going to keep it for now and see if I can make it work somehow or for like days where I don't need my lashes to look impressive, I can use this one. Um, but for glamorous looks, I don't recommend it because it honestly didn't do that much for me. The one I'm wearing, I really love, by the way. This is the one from Anastasia. I love this one. Anyways, fantasize. I tried the other day and I actually got a couple of compliments on that video where I was wearing this one on my lashes, which made me feel good about it. But I honestly didn't think it did all that for me. So I'll have to keep trying this one, see different ways of building it. I did love that... Whenever I've used it, it separates my lashes nicely, but I just don't know that it's doing that much when it comes to length and volume, but then I did get some compliments in that video, so I don't know if I'm tripping or if the mascara might just be better than I realize. I think if I hadn't gotten compliments, I probably would be giving this one away because I wasn't impressed by it, uh, but because I got compliments, I'm going to keep trying it. <laughs> I have three concealers to update you on, and I'm going to do so. Is it three? No, it's four. I like the Tower 28 one so much, it was in the wrong drawer already. It was like in my collection. Anyways, I have four concealers to update you on, and I'll update you in order of which one I like better. 
the least favorite, which I liked, but the others are just better, is the House Labs one. The House Labs one has amazing coverage, it has a beautiful natural finish, and it looks great underneath my eyes. However, it's the least radiant one out of the ones I'm going to mention, and I do love me a concealer with a radiant finish. So this one is the one that is more noticeable underneath my eyes at the end of the day, and so for that reason it's my least favorite, but when I tried it, it was still like a 9 out of 10. I didn't hate it, I definitely did still like it. I feel like if you have combination skin or oily skin, this is probably going to be the best one for you, but my super dry skin just prefers a concealer that has a bit more hydration to it. With that said, I liked it just fine, and of course I am keeping them. All the concealers I'm about to mention, I did purchase myself. The next one would be the Mario one. This one has a natural to glowy finish, a beautiful thin texture, a great medium coverage. All in all, it's like a 9.5. I really love it. I don't think it creases underneath my eyes. It makes my under eyes look great. It's a fantastic concealer, but the concealer competition lately has been incredible. I have pretty much liked every single concealer I've tried. And so this is the one in third place because the other two I think are even better. I'm keeping it, of course, I loved it, but my favorite two, and I don't actually know which one of these I like better, are the Tower 28 one and the new Gucci concealer. The new Gucci concealer is what I'm wearing today underneath my eyes, which as you can see is making my under eyes look fantastic. Both of these have a super thin, creamy, luxurious, hydrating formula that sink right into my skin, they give me a beautiful medium coverage underneath my eyes, they don't crease, they give me the brightness that I want and need, they have a beautiful radiant finish, I can set them with a light translucent powder and my under eyes look fantastic all day whenever I put any of these concealers on. I have to try them side by side to see if I can make up my mind on which one I like better, but I have not done that yet and so I can't make up my mind just yet, I truly love them both that much. So needless to say, I highly recommend either one of these, especially if you have very dry skin like mine. I have three more foundations to update you on, and once again I'm going to start with the worst one. This right here, and I also purchased all of these myself. This is the MAC Studio Radiance Serum Powered Foundation. I had such high expectations for this one, I was so excited to try it and review it for you. And this foundation... Is not it. <laughs> I have desert dry skin. Everything lasts forever on my skin and this foundation wore off on me like three to four hours in. It gave me like two good hours where I was very impressed with it and it looked amazing and then as time went on throughout the day it started getting patchy, it started disappearing from some areas and clumping up in other areas not a big fan of this one at all. And like I said, I have desert dry skin. Everything lasts on me for a very long time. And this formula started disappearing. The first time I wore it, I did wear it with Magic Cream underneath, which is a heavy moisturizer. But I wear Magic Cream with everything in my collection and it works with everything. A few of you said though, I should have tried it with something else. So I did try it with something else afterwards and it wore terribly as well. So needless to say, I don't recommend this one. I did spend my money on it, so I'm keeping it because maybe I can combine it with something else and make it work, but don't go for it. I also tried this right here, the More Than A Pretty Face Skin Caring Foundation from Polite Society. This is the same formula as the Born This Way Foundation from Too Faced, basically. If you like the Born This Way Foundation from Too Faced, you'll like this one. It has a medium to full buildable coverage, a natural finish, a thin-ish texture, it's not the thinnest, but it's also not super creamy, and it honestly worked wonders on my dry skin. Like I said, if you like the Born This Way foundation from Too Faced, it's like pretty much the same thing. This one does have some additional um, skincare ingredients like niacinamide and willow bark plus vegan hyaluronic acid. It's a good formula, I liked it. It's a great foundation for every day, it's a great foundation if you like something that'll cover a lot because it covers quite a bit. And then my favorite foundation that I have tried lately, which is this one right here from Glossier. This Glossier foundation has a thin texture, which I absolutely love, with a beautiful radiant finish to it. It covers all of my redness, but it looks very natural. 
on my dry skin it is super thin it sinks right into the skin I absolutely loved it um, the only con is that I feel like this color is a bit too pale for me right now but I'm still using it I'm still making it work I'm still bronzing it up I've used it three or four times now and I love it this is what I was wearing in yesterday's video just a fantastic fantastic foundation I highly recommend it this is my new favorite product Glossier has ever made <laughs> they still kept the essence of their brand by making something that looks very natural on the skin but at the same time they finally gave us something that has coverage which my red cheeks definitely appreciate I finally tried the Hydro Maniac Cheek Tint from Urban Decay and these are okay. They have a very sheer coverage um, but they still give you a nice flush on the cheeks. They look natural and for how much product you get in this little container they're going to last you forever because you truly need just a tiny amount of these to make them work. This is not a blush formula that I think see myself reaching for all that often but it's not bad it's just I don't know it's kind of a tint to your cheeks and I prefer something that is a bit more opaque I guess it's okay I don't know that I recommend it that much <laughs> this was sent to me by the brand and I don't have any other shades of this blush formula from them so I'm keeping them for reference Colourpop came out with these three stick shadow sticks in their 1111 collection. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I've used this multiple times because I haven't. I've used it once when I reviewed the video, but I'm just not the biggest fan of stick eyeshadows. So I'm going to be giving these away. Yes, I'm going to be giving these away. They retail for $8 each. If you like single cream eyeshadows, definitely go for them because the formulas are excellent but I just know that I'm not going to reach for them so what's the point of having them in my collection right I did love the eyeshadow palette which you'll see in my eyeshadow palette ranking video but these right here I'm going to be giving away <laughs> Valentino has these tween eyeliners and I tried this one recently this is the one that's black on both sides and my favorite thing about this one is that the liquid side of it gives you matte black wings um, it has a beautiful pigmented fully matte formula that I find very very flattering the tip of it is very thin so you do have a lot of precision with this one and then on the other side it has a little pencil eyeliner I feel like this is pretty convenient if you just want to travel with one pencil that'll do two things um, so I like it this was sent to me and I am keeping it you know a Valentino product that I absolutely loved and I did purchase this one myself these right here these are lip and cheek products from Valentino so you can wear it as a matte liquid lipstick or you can put it on your cheeks and just tap it in for a beautiful beautiful flush take a look right here I guess I'm just going to layer my blushes today it's fine so I love the color that I chose. It looks very nice and peachy and natural. This is the shade Licoroso, I think, and it looks pretty good on the cheeks and it also looks pretty good on the lips. I will say I'm not putting this in my lip drawer. I'm going to be putting this one in my cheek drawer because I definitely prefer it as a blush than I do a lipstick. I can't update you on this one because I honestly have not given it the chance that it deserves yet. So this one is going back to my bin and I'll update you on it in the future. But I do have just a handful more products to update you on. This right here from Give is a plumping lip balm. I bought it in the lightest shade which is this beautiful pink color. And this definitely feels spicy on the lips. But it is a plumping effect that I can definitely tolerate and I love the finish of this one. I love wearing it with a lip liner. Highly recommend it and of course I'm keeping it. I bought it myself. Merit sent me this solo shadow. It's a cream eyeshadow that they came out with. And if you are a fan of one and done eyeshadows, I do like it. I recommend it. The open and close mechanism is very strong so I think that they made it so that it's sealed airtight and so that it lasts for a very long time. That is definitely a huge positive. The packaging is great. I did also really like the color I got which is this stunning green shade. I'm not the biggest fan of one and done shadows um, so I'll keep it and I'm going to use it but I probably will be combining it with um, eyeshadows like I did when I first tried it 
in a recent video. I like to combine my creams with my powders and just mix it for like dimension and stuff. So that's the way I see myself using this one. I tried this cute Valentino lipstick recently um, and I loved the formula of it. It's creamy, it's pigmented, it's opaque. The formula feels very luxurious, however, I really do wish that Valentino would give us a more luxurious packaging. I know that this is a mini lipstick, it's not the full size, but a lot of the Valentino packaging feels like cheap plastic and they charge quite a bit for the brand. It is a luxury brand sold at Sephora, so I just wish that the packaging would be better. This just doesn't feel like luxury to me. The formula does, but the lipstick packaging doesn't. So I don't recommend these. <laughs> you can find similar formulas for better prices or in the same price range, you can find products that not only feel luxurious, but the packaging is luxurious as well. Two more products to go. I absolutely loved this Huda Beauty Glowish Color Changing Lip Balm. I have been using it quite a bit. It's like just you put it on and go. It doesn't matter if you are or you aren't wearing makeup. It's just hydrating for the lips. This green color gives you a very light pink type of um, color to the lips and I honestly really loved it. And last but not least, a new product from Pat McGrath and that is this right here. This is the new Pat McGrath Intensifies Long Wear Eyeshadow Primer. I was so excited to try this one when I first got it and I don't love it as an all over eyeshadow primer for my eyeshadows. It makes it so that the mattes are so freaking hard to blend when you put it on the crease of your eyes. Do not recommend it that way. Here's how I do like it and I would recommend that you use it. If you do your makeup sort of like I do, which is I always start with the mattes and I build up my crease and I intensify the outer corner, leaving the eyelid blank to then go on with the shiny shades on the eyelid. When you finish with the mattes, you use this one just on the eyelid and then layer the shimmers on top and it works wonders that way because the shimmers don't have any fallout, they build up beautifully, they have this crazy intensity to them. So in that sense, I like it, but I don't like to put it underneath my matte shades because it makes it so that the matte shades are harder to work with. And Pat McGrath mattes um, are super easy to blend, so for this to make them a little bit more tricky, blew my mind. <laughs> so I don't know whether to recommend it or not. Like I said, I would recommend that if you have it, you use it just underneath the shimmers rather than all over the eye and you'll probably have a much better experience with it. Okay, that wasn't the last product. I almost forgot this right here. This is the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette. I'm actually wearing this one as contour to my cheeks today and I wanted to put it in this video rather than my palette ranking video because I find myself gravitating towards this palette not for eyeshadow purposes, but rather for contouring purposes, for priming my eyes purposes. This right here, great eyeshadow primer. I love it for that. I've been combining both of these shades to contour. This black color right here, great for um, like smudging around the eyes. But I find myself reaching for it for complexion purposes more so than for eyeshadow purposes. And so I wanted to put it in this video. This is an artistry palette you have to kind of know what colors to combine to make this palette work for you the way it should. It's definitely a palette where you have to think about what you're doing in order to like get it right. Like for my contour today, I feel like it looks nice and natural and I combine both of these shades because this one's too light and I would have to sit there and build it a lot and this one's a bit too dark for me. So combining those two works well for me. If you have a warmer complexion, you might combine it with one of the warmer shades right here. It's a fantastic palette. I feel like if you love to play with makeup, you'll like it. If you are a working makeup artist, you'll love it, of course. And I think it has a fair price for what you get in it. This one retails for 60 some dollars and I feel like you do get a lot of products in here um, and the packaging is absolutely stunning. I bought this one myself and of course I'm keeping it. I've been reaching for it quite a lot. As you can see, mine looks a little busted already. Okay, so now for real, that was the last of it. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up, 
before you leave. Let me know if you've tried any of these products I've mentioned and what you think of them. And I hope that this updates video was helpful. I'm going to work on putting all of these into my collection behind me now. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to please subscribe before you leave. I think I said like this video if you liked it, but you know, like it. <laughs> um, it helps me out. And if you are going to purchase any of the products I talked about today, please do so using the links I'm leaving you down below in the description box. I love you all so much. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.